Welcome back to ODG. Myself, Peter. I'm gonna show you feature 9 and 10 of our small Toro Commander overview. And with that said, let's switch on the Windows Commander itself. So, for the feature number 9, we were talking that next to the path, there are two buttons here. The first one is for favorites and something like looks like a star. And the next one is your full history or I've been going in the last 20 locations yourselves. It's kind of a very useful feature because usually when you start working on some projects, you're usually back and forth between certain folders. And you might say that Windows Explorer has more or less a similar functionality. If we open that right here, you might probably see that if you move along in some let's say this folder and then you have this back button where you can go back and if you go back here you would see your history so very similar solution however uh, Toro Commander allows you to make favorites and now in order for the favorites to work we have to actually run Toto Commander as administrators so we pull out this menu run as administrator with the right mouse button. So now we find ourselves a folder which we want to actually work in. So for example, we go to the designs, yes. And there we have actually a nice zip file in there as well. So, and we say click here with the left button and we add the current directory as a favorite so even allows you to make a description in which case it also does the description itself designs but i would actually fill in maybe the full path and make sense projects designs and i say also say the target here directory and then we say okay and there in the history now we have two favorites so the first one is probably files the second one is and there is also a shortcut to move along these favorites as well. Favorites. So it's Control D, and with the Control D shortcut, we basically can switch to the desired favorite. And of course, we can put favorites as well for left and right pane which actually are shared so that's about the favorites in the history very nice functions pretty neat and now the big topic which you want to talk about which is the customization and the setting of total commander in the first place um, as we said in order for changes to take effect you have to be into an administrative mode to allow total commander to make changes to your drives and basically total commander is installed in my case here as you see how small the program is 24 7 megabytes total and the settings are saved into a windows commander ini file once we configure ourselves our settings and we want to really save them actually we could copy this win commander file to a certain other location where it can be stored and once we copy that file we could then copy it back into the program and the program will restore any settings that we had before and here i can give you a small demonstration of this so if i now change completely the color scheme for example the background is going to be red and then the marking color is going to be green then i apply all that so that's pretty neat as well, by the way, I like it. We go to the top of commander folder. Let's see the selection is green and we can now go back and actually press F5 and we copy that file on top, which would allow us to override it as well. So, and now if I start, restart the top of commander, read this previous ini file 
and the bow just start absolutely as it was before and by the way as you see it also remembers the last location in which we were so usually if you don't start as administrator it will lose the location so it will always go back to the last location where you closed the program for the last time as administrator on your computer so going back to the configuration so we have here um, a couple of settings we have the vertical button bar which is not shown in my um, particular instance and then we have the button bar on top which is also not shown and there we have the dark setting and normal setting which is for daily and nightly work and dark side is not bad at all actually I might try it out and there we have we can save the position and save the settings as a whole by saving the position is you can also adjust the tap stops as we said name length the um, uh, space you have for the type and then the date and further attributes which actually remain most of the time hidden we don't usually care about attributes actually ourselves so much and then we have the options and the first option is the layout and on the layout we can actually at the start maybe um, keep a few things so the button bar let's show it and there you have it with the basic operations so let me quickly walk you through the operations so this is a refresh to re read the sources basically if there are any changes this is um, having this setup as a all file details and the uh, so this is part of the show menu then we have the thumbnail view as we know it here is only the names then it's the full that we have then there is a tree structure and then there is this type of approach which would go through all the files which I have in these subdirectories right now and list them in that way okay so inverting the selection the usual option I don't know why it's so important as well in the Windows Explorer we know that it's available go back and forth something through the history and then you have put to archive out f5 and then unpack from archive which is out on f9 um connection to the ftp ftp connection is a new you can set up a completely new fresh ftp connection which will not be saved then you have the search searching for files and folders and then we have the multi rename tool and next to it is as well the synchronized directories options on which we will make complete videos in much more detail and depth later they are followed for noting purposes from copy files with power sets and the notepad so going back to the options so this was the button bar then there was the vertical button bar let's take a look there it is it more or less has the copy paste function and the pack package new folder function as we saw it showing the drive buttons there they are on top here drive combo box is the one here allowing you to select drives if you know the alt f1 alt f2 shortcuts you don't need to read this but on the other hand you have the information about the drive free space which will disappear if you hide that one show the current directory show clickable path parts the breadcrumb bar Because in the end, actually, you can even directly type a folder right here. 
like for example if I want to go to bonjour folder I could do it the hard way bon jour there it is yep show tab stops header show the status bar it's basically all the flat user interface I like actually to Take use of the more modern graphics by going back to Windows XP, for example, Team doesn't make any sense. Then displaying here, the main option would be to show or hide the hidden files, depending on the way, if you want to see them or not see them, and then showing the system files as well. I even have this actually turned off. Um, it turns me off, really. Then we have uh, used the long file names, and it's a command option. Leave it like it is. This is some DOS compatibility. For historical reasons in there L loading complete the, the the whole tree doesn't make sense it's going to take you more time it's going to slow down the system so don't do it show help test for the button and as two tips makes total sense uh so basically if i uh, stay a little bit here it should show me um this works only for buttons though obviously so i gotta show the button bar and then it's gonna show me some two tips <clears throat> about these buttons There it is. Source thumbnail view. <clears throat> Sorting method is alphabetical, but you can do it. All, we can do it also on a numeric code and natural sorting by character and sorting and natural sorting alphabetical and numbers. The icons are clear. Usually it shows all the icons. This is the folder icon in this case, and the zip icon you know, and this is a special FX icon. So fonts. That's to taste. Usually the font file is this main window font is here, including the bold and non-bold options. Um, and this is on for the viewers and the dialogues. Just to taste, you click change, and then you can put any font you have here in your computer. Now coming back to the color, as you know, this is my color scheme. I use yellow for the mark color. Background is gray. The original black background is actually white. And the cursor color, I just use the Windows theme for cursor. Otherwise, if I you don't use the Windows team, it will be that not very nicely designed two lines approach. Um, here on the tab stops again um, with a little more detail. By default, they are in bytes, and that is not very useful. You're looking to put them in something that allows gigabytes at least, and if not terabytes as well. That would basically make the file sizes when you have them and when they're higher. A little bit more readable than just actually calculating uh, to the last byte how many millions of, or basically billions of bytes a file has um, showing the date options 12 hour format and the directory count in the footer so basically besides the files it also shows you the directories 0 of 41 selected in this case it's very, very cool. It's almost default that I leave it except changing the representation in the size display. So called. In the header and the footer. So both the same. Showing bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes. The folder tabs. As you know, if we have multiple tabs here, we can open a few of them and basically jump back and forth so you can virtually end up with more than two panes let's make here custom columns as we say is actually um, an advanced configuration no need to do anything there here as well the view mode too so the other thing which we can tweak is the operation and we can allow only one copy of total commander at a time 
makes absolutely great sense to do that. Definitely. Um, moving icon to the system tram minimized. It's about the total commander icon. Um, opening files and directories with a single click. I'm used to the double click, so I'm going to just leave it like it is. I'll complete the path that's all implemented all on in the default setting of the program. So it's set up actually pretty, pretty well, I'd say. Having an external viewer editor, something better than the included. And for the editor, or where we can not only read but also write text, this program goes back to the original notepad, which is famous for its simplicity and responsiveness. Using the standard method is recommended, so no changes here. And the mouth to refresh is to basically gather some collect the data on the on the files in the file structure, but there is no real need to touch anything in this menu, as in the quick search as well. It's just only a shortcut keyboard command that you can. By the way, quick search is. Um, you basically do like this. Um, there you see a file with the D is already located on the top. So we press Control Alt and we press F, and then basically there is nothing with F in this. But is that something we see? Yes. Is there something with F? No. Something with C? Oh, and then we have common. So that's about it. Just a mini quick search function. Um, the FTP connection settings, if you allow me, we will skip them because they are not that basic and you will not really need to change them here. In the plugins, usually I have WinRAR installed and uh, the Packard plugins we can configure. Right here. Um, the archivers are right here and I'm using the UnRAR. Usually, and for the RAR I have given the location. Of my RAR, of my RAR executable. The zip packer which the program uses is the infamous pkzip.exe and for the packer and internal one it is using the same. Uh, it's set up normally to a by default to a normal compression. Um, you can use, of course, maximum compression all the time. With this processor speed right now, it's no problem. I would even set it up like that right now. And then you could use a normal temporary folder or there's a special temporary folder which is created just for you in particular, temporarily. Under the miscellaneous, we have a few checkboxes which are by default all selected and you could redefine the keyboard mapping for some shortcuts using control shift delay and O of the keyboard for some activities now a common prompt underneath and the custom sounds can be configured. So that's about all the options. You don't need to do much here. Just do the necessary, set up the program, and get used to it. It is just about 
as good as it gets for file management. So that's about it for the configuration of Toto Commander and the history and favorites function. Um, if you like the videos, I would appreciate if you subscribe down there and leave your comments, give you likes and see you in the next one. Let's do it.